Now I have all the rails and styles milled up for the door and I've scribed a line around here for the length to cut the styles. I'm going to go ahead and set that up so that I can cross cut them to length and we'll be on our way. Now I'm going to cut a groove in the edges of these parts to accept the panel. I'll also be able to line up my mortising bit right inside of that groove. Now I need to take the dimension from the bottom of the groove to the opposite edge. And that's where our mortise is going to end. Now we'll set a haunch at the top and the bottom. Let's go to the mortising machine and mortise these out. Now what I need to do is to pick up the length of the, uh, the tenons. So I'll get that off of my ruler here. I'll put just a small little tick mark off of the end. Now I'll wrap my lines with a square to ensure that the shoulders are square. All right, now we can go ahead and set the height of the blade according to the uh, grooves that we've cut. So I'm gonna start with the, uh, the thinnest one to begin with and we'll cut that side of the tenon first. The reason why I did that is that I didn't want to make a mistake. If I happen to cut the other side, it's not going to be too deep. You should be able to check that this way. That looks pretty good. I have a little room to do some planing to make it a perfect fit. When planing tenons, I plane the outside cheek to begin with and then hold it against the outside of the opposing piece then I come back and plane the opposite cheek until it fits. Next, I pair my shoulders back to the scribe line. Now I have to cut the haunches. I've planed up a piece of material that's the depth of the groove. That way I can just apply it to the shoulder and scribe my line for the length. There we go, looks pretty good. Let's go cut a panel. Now we'll square up an end and cut it to length. Now since this is close to being a square, I'm actually gonna cross cut it to length using the rip fence. But the reason why I wanted to be really conscious about making sure that this end was square, if it isn't and I rip it, it ends up being a parallelogram, which isn't any good. Now I need to cut some rabbits all around the panel in order for it to fit into the groove. This is gonna be a flat panel on the front and flush to the backside of the frame. So I'll pick up a couple of dimensions and off of the front surface, this is the thickness of the groove. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space in the back so we can have some expansion and contraction. Now, I'll run a saw cut on all four of these surfaces and then I'll put the panel upright to cut it off. And this way, the waste will fall away and it won't get trapped between the saw blade and the fence and get shot back at me. Now we'll reset the blade height and we want the tip of the blade to come to the underside of this groove. Now we'll set the thickness of the groove from the inside of the blade to the fence. Okay, that fits pretty well, but if needed, you could certainly run a rabbit plane along, along here in order to tweak it to make sure you get a good snug fit. Let's see if we can get this to go together. There we go, looking pretty good. Let's glue it up.
Let's check it for square. All right, we'll live with that. Okay, now what I need to do is to set this into place and I really need to make the door the shape of the opening. Now you notice that this is good and flush along the bottom and I have a little movement on the side here. So what I'll do is I'll plane this lower edge so that the, the, these two rails meet perfectly. And that way this is square to the bottom and it's whatever angle this might be and we should be where we need to be. All right, that looks pretty good. So what I'd like to do now is just to prop this up on some veneer. So that looks like it's gonna work pretty well. I'll have to take a little bit more off of here. So why don't we go ahead and set the hinges at this point. Okay, usually when I set a pair of hinges, I really like to use these cast ones and stay away from the rolled hinges. Uh, because these are going to last a whole lot longer. I like to locate them right where the r rail ends at the panel. And I'll mark that with a knife. Now I'm going to transfer these lines across the edge. Now I'd like to go ahead and pick up the distance that the hinge has to be cut into the door. So that distance will be from the edge of the leaf to the center of the pin. Now we'll go ahead and pick up the thickness of one of these leaves and we'll scribe that distance in between those two. Okay, let's do a little sawing and chopping. I'm gonna stay just shy of the line. Then we'll go ahead and chop it out. I'm using feather cuts now in order to try to control my depth of cut. You notice two blows with the mallet will bring it approximately to the same depth each time. Now I want to make sure that this chisel goes right into the scribe line and we'll send that across. If we can maintain that little wall along there, it's a good idea because we have some place to butt our hinge against when we're setting the screws. And that should go into place nicely. Okay, now we need to screw the hinge into place. Now change out the bit and we'll drill these to depth. Now, one of the reasons why people break off the heads of the screws all the time is, is they think that they can drive the screw without making this pilot hole for this little shank or the shank hole. And it's really important that you make that shank hole, otherwise you'll snap off the head every time. Now that hole only has to be the length of the shank. Why don't we go ahead and set a couple of these. Always a good idea to put a little wax on them. Now I like to use a hand driver for these because I can really feel when they tighten up and I don't want to over tighten them. Okay, now we can go ahead and set the elevation of these hinges when we set these on top of the shims. Now with the hinges on this side, I'm just gonna take my knife, mark the top, Mark the bottom. That's the location of our hinges on the case now. It's a little easier to uh, work on this uh, case with it up on end like this. Uh, as you notice now that uh, the door needs to be trimmed to width, I might take a little bit more off the bottom as well. I'll just reach inside with my pencil and scribe a line along the inside edge here. And that'll at least give me a line that's parallel to the uh, petition. And I'll go ahead and try and plane to those lines. This petition has a little curve in it. You'll notice that the pencil line is a little greater here 
than it is here. So I'm going to have to put a slight arc into this door in order for it to fit the work. I'm also going to bevel this slightly so that the angle uh, will make the clearance a little bit easier. Well, the only way to test it is to put it back on. Let's uh, put the catch on. The first thing that we need to do is put the stop on uh, before we, we put on the catch so that the door doesn't swing into the opening. So I've uh, reached inside and scribed a line on the inside, the thickness of the door, and I'm going to line that up with my pencil line. Yeah, that looks good. Now we can go ahead and put the catch on. Don't forget to drill that shank hole. All right, I'm gonna wax these just like I did my brass screws. Tap with the hammer, gets the lag uh, into the hole and gets it started. Any. Let's go. Right there. Look at that. Now we have a few more things that we have to do. I would feel a lot more secure and the bench will last a lot longer if I put a few pins in the mortise and tenons in the legs and the rails. Uh, I'll also want to put on some uh, jaws on the vise and also bevel the edges on all the, uh, the edge. And there's one more thing that we have to do. We have to christen the bench. I feel better now. Now, the bench dogs are an important part of this bench. You notice that the holes are lined up with the dog in the vise so that I can put a, a dog here and capture work in between any one of these spots. I can also put them in these spots here, span a piece of wood across and be able to push panels up against it in order to do planing at different lengths and so forth. And they're also very handy sometimes in order to brace a piece against when you clamp it at one end. So they're pretty useful. The other thing you'll notice is that these are different heights. And what I do is I make this dimension just slightly smaller than what a normal size piece of wood would be. For instance, if you have a three quarter inch uh, panel, you would not want to have this maybe at five eighths. If it's half, you might want it at three eighths. If it's a quarter, you might want it at three sixteenths. And sometimes that's the length of this is uh, a little bit stronger if they're cut a little bit shorter as well. But other than that, I'm looking forward to using this baby. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video workshop. And I hope you enjoy your bench as long as I've enjoyed mine.